Yes, today we're fortunate to be joined by Julie Meek, a dietitian. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Nisha. Now, Julie, you've worked in private practice for quite a period of time. Um, you're a professional speaker. You do speak for a lot of uh, mining organisations on the link, interestingly, the link between nutrition and performance. Can you t tell us about what we're going to be talking about today? Well, today we're going to talk about eating well while travelling, particularly on planes. Mm, in Western important. Australia, obviously, it's very important with the fly in, fly out. But it also applies to businessmen and women who travel frequently because of, of business sure. and find themselves on the plane eating a lot. So when we're on the plane and we do get those meals, what are, what are your key concerns about those meals? It's not an overly big concern if you're doing it as a holiday mm -hmm. and part of the holiday is going on the plane and, and having a great time. Sure. But if you are on there frequently and you're presented with snacks, mm -hmm. which are commonly cookies, large cookies, yeah. chocolate bars, <laughs> ice creams, mm -hmm. Things like that, they're there for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because they're yummy, but secondly, because air hostesses don't need to come up and down all the time to give you food. So they take a while for you to eat. That's so, right. Yep. That's right. Wow. But the problem with something like a really big cookie is that that could be a whole meal for you or sometimes even more. And they're add-ons to a meal that we've already eaten. Sure. So when we're being calorie conscious, for example, you could blow that whole, that whole number by having that one cookie or that, that whole ice cream. In one Quite flight. easily. People don't realise that because it is a cookie, yeah. but the size of it is sometimes the inside of, of a, um, a side plate mm -hmm. and quite thick. Sure. So the concern really lies with our fly-in and fly-out workers, doesn't mm -hmm. it? The, the gentlemen and ladies who are flying out, maybe one-on-one, -on -one, two and two and so forth, um, if they are exposed to food constantly and, and having it constantly. That's right. Yeah. And often on the trips north back down to Perth, it might only be an hour and a half to two hours mm. and there's a lot of snacks. So rather than having a meal, they're given quite a few snacks of that variety. So a lot of sweet things, mm. sometimes savoury items like crisps, etc. Mm. And then if they're having a drink to relax in terms of alcohol, sure. they've got the fat and the alcohol together, whether it's sweet or savoury, and the fat is express posted in to your body. Goodness. So, what, given what you've just said, what are the long-term effects if, let's say, someone's a fly-in, fly-out worker for a couple of years or even, well, a couple of years, not as long, but maybe five to ten years, which is probably close to an average? Even within a couple of years, yeah. major damage can be done. A weight is a big issue with fly-in, fly-out because of the routine and mm. exercise that may not be in the mix. Sure. And also eating, you know, they're presented with a dining hall or a mess where there is food on tap all the time. There's a lot of choice yeah. and they might be choosing a lot of it, plus yeah. then flying regularly as well. Sure. So what tips can you, I guess, offer the fly and fly out workers, but also, as you mentioned earlier, businessmen and women who are travelling quite frequently? If we start with the fly and fly out, quite often they don't need to eat while they're on the plane okay. because they've already had a meal before they get on there. Okay. So it's just because <laughs> it's presented to them that they mm. actually eat. So I'd think about that, do I need to eat now on the plane and you can say no it's not mm. compulsory that yes. you accept a snack that's given to you on the plane in terms of business men and women it's i think more about taking some of your own things if you feel that what you're given is not appropriate sure. and also not having all the add-ons you don't have to have a meal plus this plus this plus this and it's boring sometimes in the plane mm. so food can be the exciting thing when you are feeling bored. So perhaps bring something else on the plane to keep you busy? Yes, yeah. whether it's reading um, a magazine, a book, a game, or if, even if they're doing work, mm -hmm. something to occupy your time rather than eating. Okay, so it's sounding like it comes down to a lot of individual choice. It is. It is. Right? Yeah. It is. Yeah. So it's really important for someone to be able to, uh, to assess what's in front of them and, and make the right choice rather than eat it just because it's, I guess it's easy when you're in that situation. I think it's really helpful to have a strategy mm -hmm. before you get on the plane. Because otherwise, you get on and you haven't made a decision about what you're going to do. It's then easy to take something. Mm. But if you've got a strategy and you think, well, I've eaten breakfast before I got on the plane. I don't actually need to eat anything. Mm. I'll have a drink instead. Mm. There's no problem. And I'll make sure I take my book with me so I've got something to read rather than eat. Wonderful. Well, look, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. We really appreciate it. Um, more information, because I'm sure our audience are very interested in maybe getting more tips or perhaps touching base with yourself, um, can be found on www.thecouch.com.au. So visit our website and there will be some links uh, to Julie if you want to make contact. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Nisha. Cheers. Back to you, Fred.